Welcome back to part four on our bookcase build with Woodworking with Wes. Bringing you up to date, we build our cabinet, we did our ends. We just got through doing our crown and dental mold. It looks great. But now we're into a real fancy door. And I want to show you what we're going to do. We're building a glass mullion door. Just like that. And I'm going to show you how I did that. So let's get started. We're getting ready to start on our glass door. I wanted to show you a few of the things you need to get started before you do. The glass door starts off with a frame. Now we have built several doors, made some videos about building doors, and we're going to give you a link to one of those doors. But it's just a regular door that we would do, build with our style and rail sets on our router table. But what we've done is not include a panel. We'll talk about this in a minute. After we get it built, we cut out the little lip all the way around the back that would hold in the panel. So now we have an open space for our glass. Once you get that done, you get your frame glued up. I always like to have a, a piece of wood for a spacer underneath to hold that is uh, fits like this. And that gives me a surface to work on for my mullions. What we did for our glass mullions, I'm going to have my video uh, videographer come up close here. I want to show you what we're using for mullions. What we did with our mullions, our frame has a 14, in, a 14 degree inside bevel. So what I did is I made some strips that were one inch wide with a 14 degree bevel on both sides and the thickness of the face of our door. So this matches up and I've already glued in my centerpiece so that we can do that but you take your measurement long point to long point and cut your piece and what I did to space it I made me some little blocks and I made them the same size for my spacer and I put my spacer blocks like that when I glued in my piece and it's all, this is only held by glue so what I do is I glue the little ends and I put it in there. Now I'm, we're going to glue in the cross pieces and again what I did was make me some spacers and that's the secret in my opinion that's the secret to making a really good mullion door is to have everything even spaced evenly. So let's take our side to side spacers and we're going to put in our spacers that are the cross pieces. And what I did is I made my cross piece spacers like this and then I went and I just cut me some long pieces that I knew were going to be long enough and I put a 14 degree bevel on the outsides of each one of these and then I went and I just checked because you've got to have a 14 degree bevel on both sides I checked my measurements, got my exact measurements, I tested my pieces, and then I went and set up stop block on my miter saw, and I cut all my pieces all at once so they were all the same. Consistency and spacing, very important. And now all my little pieces fit in here, like that, and you just glue them in. And the space again, and glue it in, and space again, and you just work your way down the door. Now I marked top of my door, and when I did my other door that I just showed you, I did the same thing, so that if there's any inconsistency in my spacing, and I did the math, and so there really isn't, but if there was, you'd want your inconsistency to also be in the same place and at the bottom of the door always works good. So, But like I say, I made my spacers and did my math, and I don't have any inconsistencies, and neither would you if you work your math correctly. Just make sure that you uh, have your joints tight, your angles right, and some spacer blocks, and it would work out really good. Let's uh, grab some glue. I'm gonna show you a little gluing trick that I do that makes it easy to glue up. We'll grab some glue here. And what I have here is just an extra piece of wood. 
and we're just going to put a gob of glue on my piece of wood here. We're going to take our little mullion pieces, our cross mullion pieces. This is our bevel, so top, bottom, end pieces. And we're just going to take a little dab of glue on the end like that and try to drag it across our wood and then we have enough glue but not too much glue. And very carefully make sure your spacer is in the right place and held down and you glue in your cross mullion. And you can see we've got a little bit of a squeeze out here which is exactly what we want to show that we have enough glue. We don't want too much because we have we don't want any glue to come out on this edge, although we will, we eventually will. But we want to have a minimum to clean up. And then just pressure it down. Hold it down good and tight for just a minute while your glue gets a chance to just set for a second. If you have CA glue and you want to just put a little spot of CA glue and an accelerator on there, this is a great place for that. I don't really have any CA glue. I don't use it very much and so we just use regular glue and hold it down. One other little thing I wanted to add, one, just a trick, not a trick, but a uh, something you should think about. These little pieces here have been cut on the table saw and need to be sanded. I went through and sanded all of the edges of my little cross mullions before I glued it in. So if you just take a few minutes, sand out your saw blade marks like that, then they're ready to glue in and they're already sanded. I didn't sand my large mullion in the middle and I didn't sand my pieces that I ran through my router because I wanted those edges to be good and crisp. I'll have to go back and sand them later, a little, more, a little extra sanding, but I didn't want them to lose any of their crispness in the sanding process. This isn't as critical because nothing butts up against it. But these are critical here. Let's continue to glue up. And work our way down our door. And you can see that if you get your pieces done consistently and your spacing worked out and that's the critical part. The, our door is large enough to fit our bookcase but this can be done on any door. Whatever size you have determined that you need to have it's all about making sure your spacing is correct and that your pieces are done in, in a way, your math is done in a way that your joints are nice and tight and it's all just held together by glue. Now we're going to be putting a piece of glass in the back of this. We're going to silicone our glass in when we get all done. And I always put a little spot of silicone on each joint on the back side when we glue up our, our put our glass in. I put a little spot of, spot of silicone behind each joint and then that makes it so that my mullions are nice and tight against my glass. I never have any problem that way either. Okay, let's glue one more set in here. You can see how easy the glue up is when you just have a little block like that and you just hold your spacer block down and slide it in there. And you can see how fast this goes. It really is not hard at all but it's all about the preliminaries, getting your spacing right, getting your mullions cut correctly. It's all about the, the putting the door together is actually the easy part. It's all the math that starts before. Okay, we've got one more set. We'll come back and sand this door out in just a minute and it'll be ready to go. You can see we have this door glued up, ready, or gluing up. We've glued this one up and I'm going to just show you a couple of sanding tricks to help you sand it out. I'm not going to make you watch me sand this door, but you've seen me sand lots of stuff. Start with the back side and the inside when you get ready to sand. And sand your joints. You're going to have a little glue here. You want to sand those joints.
These are the joints that are going to sit tight against the glass. This is what I was talking about when I silicone in my glass. I put a little daub, at a very small little daub. You don't want to have any squeeze out, so you want just a drop. But a drop is enough on each one of those joints. Take a little sanding block and go down the inside of your frame and sand that outside joint. What you're taking off with your sanding on the inside is any of the glue that seeped through so that your glass has a nice tight place to fit. All right, once you sanded the back side of your door and your inside of your mullion frame there, you tip it over, getting ready to sand, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure on this joint. You do have to sand it, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure. And so I just take a, a piece of wood. This happens to be some 5 8 Baltic birch. I take a piece that is thicker than the inside of my frame and put underneath my joint and sand like that. And what that gives me is a good pressure on my frame right here so that I don't push down on that glue joint that I just spent a lot of time making correct. And now I can sand all my joints, get everything all nice and smooth, make sure that the inside of my frames are nice and sanded, sand my door out. And once your door is all sanded like that, and it's a little tricky, spend some time. This is the showpiece of your cabinet. Nice mullion door. Spend a little time sanding it out and getting it just right. It'll look so nice when it's all done and we're looking forward to seeing this bookcase all done. And we're going to have one more segment of this when we do a beadboard back. And then we're going to do that awesome finish that I was talking about. We appreciate you staying with us while we do our bookcase on woodworking with Wes.